We are dying. You, you are dying. You have died. I will die. <laughs> These are the final words of Artemio Cruz in the book, The Death of Artemio Cruz, or in Spanish, La Muerte de Artemio Cruz, uh, by the Mexican author Carlos Fuentes. Why did I read this book? Well, I picked it out of my big pile of books that I have written in Spanish. So unlike my normal style of reading in English, this one I read in Spanish, and I actually read it out loud to practice my pronunciation. So it took me about two months to read this because it just takes a long time to do that. This book was published in 1962 and it's interweaving of Artemio's deathbed as well as notable scenes from his long, long life. So you'll see Artemio as he's dying from, we're not really sure of what disease, but it's it's basically like old age mixed with an intestinal gut thing. Um, and it's it's sort of, a bloating, just general, very, very slow death. Uh, but it, it will then have these flashbacks of him in his, in his prime as maybe a corrupt politician, as a lieutenant, as a soldier, as a, a yeah, lover, as, a, as an orphan, as a sugar daddy, as a father, as a you know, husband. He's all these different things wrapped up into one. And he's, I suppose it's marked stylistically because it's very si similar to the movie Citizen Kane by Orson Welles. So even though it's a book, obviously it's not a film, the, the scenes of it are captured in a way such that it you know, intensifies him. So it's on his deathbed as well when there's characters revolving around him all you know, with their individual personalities, but they're sort of blurry and he's focusing on himself or like he'll gradually flit to a character and then turn back away. Uh, and then there's different narrations, there's different scene cuttings and all these sort of different methods that are used. So... I imagine, I haven't actually seen Citizen Kane in its entirety, but I imagine this book is, has a similar feel to what that movie evokes, at least stylistically. So what are the themes of the books? Well, death and inglorious decay. So for the most part, we have taken the glory out of death. If you think about it nowadays, if you compare us to the Vikings or the Romans or the Spartans, there, is, there isn't this cult and I suppose culture of young men and women potentially, but mostly young men going out to die in battle or passing away in their youth, sort of like the James Dean type of death that Hollywood, you know, marketed in a, in a certain way back in the, I don't know, seventies or eighties, whenever that was. And so I think we've taken that out. And I think this is a good thing. I think this is a, a, a healthy thing for cultures to have, because when there is that, that culture of dying while young, yeah, it emphasizes, well, you need to die young. So how are you going to do that? Well, you can commit suicide. You can go out and battle. You can do crazy adventurous stunts. And, you know, it, it leaves behind broken families and, and broken, yeah, a broken world almost. Um, so I think that's good. Unfortunately, though, we now have to deal with the, the after effect of that, the negative, which is we die while we're older. And so this involves a lot of decompo decomposition of the, and breakdown of the body while it's still alive. So the, there is a decay, an in, inglorious decay now related to death. And we, we see this in the book with Artemio. Obviously, he's, he talks about his, his gut bloating up, he's filling with you know, this rotten feces of mess of fluids and stenches and his inability to control his urine his nails becoming blue and withered, his facial features, his, you know, inability, you know, just gross intestinal, all, all these sorts of bodily things, which, uh, you know, for the most part, we're uncomfortable with because we're, we're healthy and alive. But when the body starts to do that, you know, you have to deal with that. And it's, um, you can see it in the mind as well. So Artemio's mind gradually slips and, you know, all we start to see are, you know, single words popping up, you are dying, I'm dying. The, you know, he'll have like a quick flashback to his youth or say Catalina, his wife's name, or, or, you know, all these different random things. But death nowadays has become a, a slow, gradual process for the most part. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure we fully acknowledge that and have systems in place to deal with that because, um, you know, it has been a pretty rapid changed since world war ii with the you know the dying in battle gloriously that's only a couple of generations so 
Um, yeah, some some interesting thoughts to to bring, and this this book definitely does evoke what death actually can be like. The second theme, I guess, would say is the soul, and and I'm asking here, you know, who is Artemio Cruz, or maybe not the soul, maybe it's more the personality, the character, the person as a whole. How who is Artemio Cruz? Um, and I think there's sort of two ways of doing it. One is just the present, so. You, you have a judgment or a, an acceptance of, of who the, their immediate actions and their words. When I meet someone for the first time, I don't have that full life story behind them. So all I can do is use first impressions. That's why first impressions are so important because you only have, what, a minute, two minutes to decide, like, is this a good person or a bad person? Should I invest more of my time into this person? Uh, it's It's becoming weird nowadays, I guess, because we see we now have the ability with the social medias with um, the podcast with all these sorts of different mediums to actually go back and look at someone's life and be like okay what was this person like in x stage of their life is this comparable to y stage of their life and do these two match and you can see this with artemio in the book he is these awful despicable things he's a corrupt politician who steals land from the mexican peasants He's the sugar daddy who has no love for, you know, his himself or this this woman he's seeing with this purely transactional relationship. He, you know, hates everyone around him. He's old and decrepit. He has no feelings for his wife and for, you know, all these sorts of things. But then you can go back and look at like the young Artemio as an orphan playing on the river with the 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 person who raised him. You can look at him as a soldier an idealist fighting for what he believes in and his gradual, I guess, jade, becoming jaded by the world and, and all these sorts of different things. So, it, um, you know, who is Artemio? Well, each of those is valid as the next in reality. When you're taking someone as a whole, and I, I guess this just gets back to the, the same old, the paradox of life. He's all of these, he's none of these, and he's every single one of these. And uh, all of that is real and so you know I don't really have any suggestions of what you do with that in, in total but other than think that okay you have to treat people as an individual I think you know when it comes down to it putting people in groups and saying you are this thing you are that thing is, is really difficult because well I mean it's easy in a way but it's wrong in a, in a way because they're not that they are Artemio, young Artemio, they're old Artemio, they're all of these things and that's not to excuse person's behaviors in the act in the present and say like, oh, you know, this is the way they are, and so we should accept that. No, if there's if there's bad behaviors, they obviously need to to fix those things. But it can just provide that that opportunity for a bit of sympathy or empathy, which I, I think is always a little bit useful. So my personal observations, my brain's so weird. As soon as I started like pondering these sorts of things, I went engineering brain wants to calculate a formula to know someone's soul. So maybe we can discount these personality aspects. Maybe we can create an aggregation of peak experience and do a bell curve of nice words to bad words or bad actions to good actions, you know, add a multiplying effect to these certain things and then we can get a result. And then yes, we have it. We have, we don't need to spend all this time thinking about and treating everyone as an individual, we can now put a number on them. This person is a, you know, a hundred. Oh, this person is 99. That hundred person is better. Uh, I don't think that'll actually work in the real world. There's, uh, there's too much, too much complexity, too much um, crazy stuff going on for, for that to actually work. But man, my brain wants to do it. <laughs> it really wants to do it. I think reading this book as well, for me, was probably looking back now, it probably would have been more suitable to read the English version. Although my Spanish is definitely at the level where I could understand most of the book, the, it does have Chilango in it, which is the Mexican slang. And this made it very hard, as well as stylistically, it used the future tense a lot, which is not used in Spanish that often. And so while it did give me a, an idea of, of, of something new, some like a different feel, there were certain parts where I was reading and just being a little bit lost. And to be honest, when you're reading in another language, it only takes three words out of three sentences, out of three paragraphs for you to lose the next 30 pages because you're not exactly sure what happened in this one sort of critical scene. And you won't even realize it's critical. It just seems like a, 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 the same scene as the one before. So 
Um, for me, I yeah, there was definitely parts of this book where my comprehension wasn't as high, and so that affected my my reading of it. So in summary, it's a toss and tumble book that is all over the place. It's literally even the chronologically, you know, flashback sequences. They don't follow from young to old. It's like middle age, then youth, and teenage years then back to a old age and then sort of like back to the middle age and then as a youth again it's going oh god this is really hard to read especially over a long time period of like two months where i'm just not sure what's going on so i i liked i liked that um and it, and it was done in a calculated and precise form you know it wasn't just willy-nilly carlos fuentes did this for a reason um, but for me that made it so much more difficult to actually read it i didn't whatever is gained from that sort of changing that that moving about of uh, an unconventional plot line of a story of a stylistically i'm not sure it added to it personally for me uh, the book definitely does contain the themes of of mexico so sort of the violence the the bribery the treachery some of the nice things as well you know the the passion the love the the caring for the family and stuff like that um, so if you want to actually know a bit more about Mexican culture, I would definitely say this book is good for it. Um, but I personally struggled to connect with, with Artemio. I found him a pretty repulsive character in general. Uh, and, and the people in his life as well, he was connected with, all of them I felt a little bit repulsive. And so for me, enjoyment-wise in the book, I wasn't saying like, you know, rooting for Artemio or or had any real connections to him. It was more like a personal observation, stepping back and going, oh, okay, Artemio is dying, so be it. <laughs> so uh, I'm giving the book The Death of Artemio Cruz by Carlos Fuentes, a five and a half out of 10. I didn't find it anything special. It was it was okay. It, I'm probably not gonna bother reading it again. I liked certain aspects, but it was more due to the the Spanish influence rather than the actual the actual thought themes and core coreness of the book i i it was sort of lacking a bit for me so that's it uh, for today other than what's something pragmatic i'm going to take well it's given me some thoughts on judgment and character and i need to write those down and properly put in place okay how should i actually judge someone when i don't have all that information available or you know what actually is an individual and how how can i treat them as an individual so definitely some uh, it's giving me some some thoughts on that i'm probably going to expand on that in one of the podcast episodes other than that what are your thoughts on on the death on dying is is it good that we've gotten rid of the the cultures of dying young of of praise and glory for that or is um is the ignom ignominious the inglorious decaying of of how we die die for the most part nowadays is that uh, is that a bad thing as well i'm not sure so that's it for today, Karen out.